Okay. Well, thank you very much for the introduction there. Uh, I am from C Prime Learning, and I'm going to be talking about uh, DevSecOps. And I have to big, give a big shout out here to Martin Makos, his uh, uh, keynote this morning, security is everyone's responsibility. He even gave me a new phrase here, democratizing security. So, but let me go ahead and get started. We're all used to this idea of having a security gate that we are marching towards at the end of our projects here. It's really a problem that we need to get rid of. And so that's really what I'm talking about here is how to get rid of the security gate at the end of your process. The security team is incredibly important, but they can't be the only ones who are actually responsible for security. Shifting left means that we all now become responsible for security in our projects and in everything that we do. Our security team becomes important moving from being a roadblock to enabling us to help us to do that with the standards, the training, the tools, guidance. And this is precisely the kind of thing security teams love to do. So first off, for any project, they can give us an idea of what kind of security goals we should set on every single project. They can give us a whole dictionary of security terminology that we should be using so we can actually all communicate with each other and know what we mean by these different things. They can help us be aware of the threats that we need to have in mind as we are building security mechanisms into our systems and, of course, the assets that we're protecting uh, the, against those threats. They can help us to have all of these things in mind. When it comes to security stories that we write, they can help us to identify all six kinds of security stories. Yes, there's six different kinds of security stories here that are all pictured, and we need to make sure we do a good job of putting those together so they can provide the standards for us, the guidance, the support, and indeed, hopefully if they have the time, reviewing our stories to be sure we actually have done a good job of capturing the security issues that we need to be paying attention to. Related to this is the idea of abuse cases and misuse cases. Those stories also need to be in there and they can help provide us guidance for the kinds of abuse cases that we need to guard against. They can also review our architectures and our designs and help us to understand where our trust boundaries are and where are the things that we need to actually have special focus on how we protect those things as we are moving forward. They can help us to know how to manage our story backlog and essentially trace our security stories back to the security risks that they are aimed at, but also to help us to manage change to our stories. Because every time there's a new story, every time there's a change to a story, there could be security impacts. And so they can help us to understand how to evaluate all those changes and stay on top of the security impacts so we're not opening up risks. They can work with our teams to come up with a good design, good structure, good architectures. Again, basic standards, but also to review our ideas and make sure we're moving in the right direction before we've written any code. Make sure that we're moving in the right directions. And then, of course, the code. Good coding standards and also checklists that our teams can be using as they are doing peer reviews of each other's code to make sure that we haven't actually tripped up and done some things that we shouldn't be doing. And then there's all the security testing. We need to make sure we test every single security feature. We need to make sure we're testing all of the misuse and abuse cases that make sure we actually have protected against them. We need to be testing for those common bugs like buffer overflow and SQL injection and all of those kind of things. We need to be doing fuzz testing to be sure the system can handle unexpected kinds of situations. And of course, we need to be doing penetration testing. These are all things that our security team can provide us the tools to do. And of course, the standards that we should be using as we're putting together our test suites and building our automated test systems to be able to check for these things. So how does this all fit in the pipeline? Well, first, of course, the peer reviews would be part of our actual commit process before the code actually gets into the pipeline. So make sure that we actually have good peer reviews going on before the commit happens. But then the commit stage, here's where you've got your code scanning going on. This is where you've got your basic testing, like the vulnerability bugs and uh, making sure the security features are working right and things like that. 
Then when you move on to the automated acceptance testing, this is where things like penetration testing, the misuse testing, the fuzz testing, all of those kind of things should also be built into the set of automated tests that's going to get kicked off every time something goes through our deployment pipeline. You can even have manual hacking tests going on as part of your manual testing is going on. But the key is, it means when you get to the end of your deployment pipeline, you don't need a security gate. And that is what really what we're going for here because our security team has been working with us through the whole process to make sure we've built things that are actually secure and done all security testing that we need to do. So that is actually what we're trying to get to. And it takes all of this to make that happen.